parts per million in short it is also called ppm so this is another way to express concentration of solution and remember this type is used that is ppm is used when the solute concentration is very low that is it is present as stress quantities this is important so that is why it is parts per million because from the name you can understand that out of million there will be only one so the concentration uh, it will be that is this type will be used only when there is very low amount of solute and how it is expressed number of parts of the component divided by total number of parts of all components of the solution now here we have written component because it, it may be anything okay so from the example it will be clear and remember you have to multiply with 10 to the power 6 because this ratio as solute concentration is very low this ratio will be very very low because here the denominator is very high and compared to denominator the numerator is very low so the ratio will be very low that is why and as it is parts per million so 10 to the power 6 will be multiplied now the value will be uh, that is we can it will be a convenient value to use otherwise it will be very small so we can express the concentration of solution in ppm as mass to mass okay so here it is simply written number of parts of component divided by number of parts of all components so this component may be mass by mass it may be volume by volume it may be mass by volume so all are possible now if we consider for example atmospheric pollution so suppose there is some impurity which is present in atmosphere and it is very minute quantity so pollution in cities can be expressed in ppm by volume okay so when we uh, we are saying that 15 ppm of carbon monoxide in the air is present so what will be the meaning the meaning will be that 15 ml of co is present in 10 to the power 6 ml of air okay so in this way uh, that is when examples will be given 15 ml of co we are seeing here in the air that means that 15 ml of co is present out of 10 to the power 6 ml of air so you can understand how low the value is 15 out of 10 to the power 6 it is very very low value next we will uh, solve a problem from which the idea of uh, ppm will be more clear so here the problem is if there is 0 0.5 0 0.551 milligram of arsenic in 348 gram of solution which solution that is not important important but the weight of solution is given which is 348 so weight of solution is given 348 and the impurity that is present 0 0.551 which is in milligram so very small amount of arsenic is present so we have to express the concentration of arsenic in parts per million okay so here what we will do 0 0.551 it is in milligram so we will multiply it with uh, we have to con convert it to gram so that is why we will multiply with 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 348 which is the total weight now this ratio we have to multiply it with 10 to the power 6 so it will be 0 0.551 10 to the power 6 and 10 to the power minus 3 together it will be 10 to the power 3 divided by 348 and ultimately the value will be 1.58 ppm 58 ppm okay so in this way we can express very low concentration of solute uh, when it is present in solution in parts per million ninth uh, type is mole fraction and this is the last type basically so mole fraction when we will use it mole fraction first of all we will know what is mole fraction so mole fraction of any component in a solution it is the ratio of number of moles of that particular component to the total number of moles of all component okay so suppose there are two component a and b and number of moles of a is n a 
and number of moles of other component is nb so total number of moles will be na plus nb so the mole fraction of a will be na divided by the total number of moles of all the components so here by all the components we have only two components so that is why we have simply written na plus nb okay similarly if we want to know what is the mole fraction of b it will be nb divided by na plus nb okay and remember if there are only two component then the mole fraction of na which is generally expressed by capital x so mole fraction of a and mole fraction of the other component b it will always be one fine because it has to be so once you can calculate x a you can easily calculate x b by one minus x a okay because total mole fraction we have considered one this is a ratio fine so for a binary solution so same thing is written here n a by n a plus n b n b by n a plus n b okay so mostly the examples that you will see or any numerical you will find it will be always binary not uh, more than that okay so what is the mole fraction of a solute in 2.5 molal aqueous solution so small m is given now small m means what it is molality molality okay so that is why it is small m it is not capital m so what it means that 2.5 moles of the solute is present in 1000 g of solvent 2.5 moles of solute which solute that is not mentioned that will also be not required 2.5 moles of solute present in 1 kg or 1000 g of solvent according to the definition of molality fine now here volume of the solvent is not given simply the molality is mentioned so what we will consider we will consider here the solvent amount is 1000 g and solute the mole number is directly given so suppose for the solute the mole fraction is x a or we can write x solute so this will be equal to n of solute divided by that is the number of moles of solute divided by number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent so individually we will find each of this number now n solute is directly given this is actually 2.5 we only have to calculate n solvent now here aqueous solution is mentioned that means solvent is water and solvent is water so we have to convert this 1000 gram of water to how many moles of water then only we can put it here n of solvent that is the number of moles of solvent so number of moles of water will be number of moles of water which is equal to n solvent it will be given mass divided by molecular weight of water which is 80 and this is equal to 55.56 so now we will put the values here 2.5 divided by 2.5 because 2.5 moles is present in 55.56 moles of water okay one component is solute another component is water plus 55.56 56 and this will be equal to 0 0.043 so in this way we can calculate mole fraction so this is a mole fraction of solute and if it is mole fraction of solvent it will be 55.56 divided by the same denominator okay so there are total nine types of uh, concentration type that is that we can express and it depends on the that is in different cases different types are used so just we have seen ppm so when very trace amount of solute is present 
mostly it is used for impurity present in atmosphere then ppm is present or any impurity in water okay now mole fraction you will see this will be used in uh, whatever we will study next their mole fraction will be very important and molarity molality normality these three are also very common that is uh, most of the time concentrations are expressed in these three uh, concentration terms types of solution so in types of solution uh, we have already discuss this fact that physical state of solvent and solute must be same one condition is obviously true that solvent is always present in higher amount that is the larger component but another thing also we have to re remember that the final physical state that is the physical state of solution after mixing solvent and solute we are getting solution so after this mixing the final state of the solution and the original state of solvent must be same so now as we know that all the three states of matter that is gas liquid solid they can be solvent as well as solute that means what that if we do permutation combination total nine types of solution is possible so when we are saying that it is gaseous solution solvent will always be gaseous now when the solvent is gaseous three possibilities are there that is solu solute may be gas liquid or solid and here we have the corresponding examples mixture of h2 and o2 okay now both are here gas now the larger component that will be the solvent okay so if oxygen is present in higher amount it will be solvent then liquid in gas air containing moisture that means moisture is basically water molecules which is present in air so air is gas air is solvent here and moisture is solute then solid in gas homogeneous mixture of camphor in nitrogen homogeneous uh, this must be mentioned because if the mixture is not homogeneous then uh, we cannot uh, give use it as example okay because in the start of the chapter we have seen that solutions are basically homogeneous fine and here camphor is the solute and nitrogen is basically the solvent and here solution nature is gaseous so obviously the physical state of nitrogen and the physical state of solution both are same next type is liquid solution so always the solvent will be liquid gas in liquid that means co2 is solvent here sorry co2 is solute here and water is solvent then liquid in liquid homogeneous mixture of water and ethanol now both are liquid okay so physical state of both solute solvent are same as that of solution so depending on which is present in larger amount depending on that that will be solvent then solid in liquid homogeneous mixture of sugar and water so this is very common and mostly by solution uh, the first thing that comes in our mind is sugar solution or water uh, salt solution fine so here sugar is solute water is solvent next type is solid solution this is to some extent unusual but examples are there so solid that is the final state of solution so solvent state must be solid in all these three cases so gas in solid that means adsorption of hydrogen gas hydrogen is solute and pd is solvent okay then liquid in solid zinc amalgam amalgam means this is also one type of alloy but in amalgam one metal is always mercury so zinc dissolve in mercury this is the example of solute and uh, sorry it is liquid in solid solution example so why we are calling it liquid in solid because mercury under normal condition it is liquid so here mercury is solute fine and zinc will be the solvent because zinc is solid mercury is liquid fine last one is solid in solid now it is simply uh, the examples of alloy you can consider so when we mix copper and zinc we get brass and here both are having same physical uh, state that is the same physical state as that of solution so 
So depending on which one is present in higher amount, that will be treated as solvent. Okay, and the component which is present in lower amount, that will be the solvent. Okay, so total nine types of solution possible. Though among these nine type, some are most mostly common. Okay, and remember. Whenever we are giving any example, we have to be sure that the mixture must be homogeneous. It should not be heterogeneous. Okay. So some types are very common. Some types types are not very common. But nine types are possible. Okay. Next, we have to know solubility. Uh, we have seen different ways by which we can express concentration. Okay, now what is the difference of concentration and solubility? When we will use the term solubility and when we will use the term concentration, that we have to know what is the exact difference. So it is the maximum amount of the solute that we can dissolve in a specified amount of solvent at a constant temperature and pressure. Now a solution in which we cannot dissolve no more extra solute that solution we will call saturated solution okay so maximum limit is reached we cannot add any further uh, sol solute and unsaturated solution it is obviously the opposite it is a solution in which we can add some more solute but remember it should be at the same temperature otherwise uh, the definition will not be correct so the solution which is in dynamic equilibrium with the undissolved solute. So suppose after dissolving solute, suppose the solute is uh, any solid. Suppose it is sugar in water we are dissolving. So some sugar, now it is in excess. So it is present, uh, that is it is still present inside the water, that is inside liquid solvent as solid form because it is in excess amount the solution is already saturated we cannot add any extra sugar in that so it will be remaining as solid okay in the container so now the solution is in dynamic equilibrium with the undissolved solute that is the solute which is not dissolved which is remaining in the container undissolved so undissolved solute solution which is in dynamic equilibrium with undissolved solute in the saturated solution and contains maximum amount of solute dissolved in a given amount of solvent okay so there will be dynamic equilibrium between this undissolved state sugar and the solution thus the concentration of solute in a saturated solution will be its solubility okay so solubility is also one type of concentration but what is the difference with concentration it is the concentration only in saturated solution that is only when the sol solution is saturated solution then only we can call the corresponding concentration as solubility okay so this is the maximum uh, amount that is possible but remember it must be at constant temperature and pressure now two types of solubility basically we will study one is solubility of solid in liquid because we have already seen that nine types are possible okay because solute solvent they can remain in solid state liquid state or gaseous state but among these nine types we will consider solid solute and liquid solvent this is one type and another type is solubility of gas as solute in a liquid solvent fine solubility of solid solute in liquid solvent so we will uh, focus on this first the dissolution of any substance in liquid to form a solution that is governed by the principle that the solute solvent interaction is either similar to or greater than solute solute and solvent solvent interaction so here we will take an example of a solid which is ionic solid and the solvent will be water so suppose for the ionic solid 
or we can say ionic solid solute suppose it is a and solvent that is liquid solvent which is wa water basically and that is b okay so when suppose we have not mixed a and b so initially between 2a there will be some interaction some attraction will be there that is two particles of solid if we consider it is basically ions because when we are saying that ionic solid there must be cation and anion and there will be some attraction between cation and anion similarly in water if you consider individual molecules there will be some attraction that is the attraction we can call it bb that is the attraction between two solvent molecules so here this solvent solvent interaction it is basically bb and solute solute interaction this is basically aa now if we want that a must be soluble in b then the interaction between a and b solute solvent the interaction among a and b that must be equal to or greater than aa interaction or bb interaction because if it is not the case then the solid cannot be dissolved in liquid solvent fine so these conditions must be fulfilled otherwise the solid solute will not be soluble in liquid solvent okay so here we will take example of sodium chloride now sodium chloride is ionic solid here we have chloride anion and na plus cation so there is some interaction electrostatic interaction between the negatively charged anion and positively charged cation and if you consider water molecule then oxygen being more electronegative than hydrogen it will carry some negative partial negative charge and hydrogen will carry some partial positive charge so there are also some kind of interaction now after dissolving nacl in water na plus cation that will be surrounded by different water molecules several water molecules right and here the important thing that we have to notice is the negative part of water which is the oxygen side that side is actually close to sodium it is not the hydrogen side which is close to sodium but the oxygen side which is towards it is facing sodium ion okay similarly and we will call it hydrated sodium ion because now the sodium ion is not free in the medium it is hydrated by the water molecules that is it is surrounded by the water molecules similarly for the anions that is chloride minus ions they are also surrounded by several water molecules but now the hydrogen side that is the del plus side that is facing towards chloride my uh, cl minus okay so this is hydrated chloride ions so here we have interaction between the negative charge of chloride and the partial positive charge of hydrogen and in case of uh, cation there is interaction between two oppositely charged particles that is na plus carrying positive charge and all these oxygen atoms carrying partial negative charge so here the interaction between ab okay that is the interaction between uh, particles of sodium plus cl minus and hydrogen and oxygen of water this interaction it is greater than or equal to actually it is greater fine so it must be at least it must be equal otherwise the solid cannot be soluble in liquid solvent so at least must be equal and if it is greater obviously that is good okay so it must be greater than the individual interactions okay aa or b so these are the conditions solubility of solid solute in liquid solvent that is this is still going on and we have to know some important terms and this is specially for these three terms these are only for solid solute in liquid solvent not for any other type of solute that is liquid solute or gaseous solute so the first thing is enthalpy of solution it is denoted in this way del h s o l 
it is the energy which is released when one mole of solid is dissolved in a solvent now mostly the energy is released so that is why there will be a negative sign fine and in some cases it may be positive also though that is rare but it may be positive also so in that case the sign will be positive next term is lattice energy that is del h l l for lattice or you can say lattice enthalpy or energy so it is the energy which is required to break one mole of crystal lattice so in the previous slide you have seen that we have here a crystal of nacl so to break this crystal that is to separate all these na plus ion and cl minus ion far from each other we obviously have to provide some energy so always it is it will require some amount of energy so it is always endothermic and the sign will be positive it is not energy released it is energy absorbed we have to provide energy so it is the energy required to break one mole of crystal lattice so it is expressing joule per mole okay for one mole the amount of energy required and the last term which is important enthalpy of hydration del h h y t it is the amount of energy released when a mole of the ion dissolves in a large amount of water forming an infinite dilute solution so mostly uh, why we have taken water here because it is enthalpy of hydration that means from the water word we are getting the word hydration so when mostly we use solvent water so that is why it is uh, directly written water here so in the previous slide we have seen that how the na plus ions and cl minus ion they are surrounded by several water molecules that means now they are hydrated they are not free na plus or cl minus so when this type of uh, process will go on that is when the mo water molecules will surround na plus ion and cl minus ion then some amount of energy will be released so this is the hydration process and the ion will dissolve in a large amount of water forming an infinite dilute solution okay so the solution must be infinite dilute under that condition the energy that will be released for one mole that energy we will call del h hydration now it is also exothermic because mostly energy is liberated fine now what is the relationship between these three for that we have to consider this diagram now in this diagram suppose we have solid nacl nacl s and we are directly converting it to na plus aqueous and cl minus aqueous and for that what energy is released it is del h sol dot okay sometimes this uh, dot is used that is uh, or you can say not uh, because it is under standard state okay so this energy will be released or in some cases it may be energy absorbed also but this is the related energy term or enthalpy term now if we want to get from nacl solid suppose we, we are getting na plus gaseous and cl minus gaseous now the energy that is involved is del h lattice so now we have to provide lattice energy and there is no picture of solvent no water is there so from solid state they are converted to gaseous free ion and from this state you can also go to this aqueous state and for that you have to provide del h hydration okay so suppose here if we consider these three states suppose this is number one state this is two this is three so directly you can go from 1 to 3 or you can reach 1 to 3 via 2. So when you are going via 2 then we have lattice energy and hydration enthalpy. So these two must be equal to del H solution. So that is why we are getting this relation and del H is that is enthalpy is basically state function. So whatever uh, path we follow that is not important state function path function there are two types of functions that we read in thermodynamics so when we are saying that it is state function it depends on from which state to which state we are reaching it is not important by what path we are following 
we can follow directly 1 to 3 or we can go first to, from 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 but that is not important the important thing is what is your initial position what is your final position so initial uh, position is 1 final is 3 so we are reaching 1 to 3 either by this way or first by going to this 2 and then from 2 to 3 so that is why these two will be equal to uh, del H solution and this type of relation we can write only when it is state function so enthalpy state function so that is why we can get this type of relation okay and remember this is always positive endothermic process and mostly del H solution it is negative and this is also negative so if the numerical value of del H hydration is greater than del H lattice and numerical value high and there is a negative sign will also be there before del H hydration so ultimately the del H solution that will be negative so mostly this type of situation is uh, there when some solid solute is uh, soluble in liquid and even if suppose in some cases if del H solution is not negative that doesn't mean that it will not be soluble it may be that the value is positive but the value is very small then also uh, the solid can be soluble in liquid okay factors affecting solubility of solid in liquid so first thing is obviously the nature of solute okay so we have already seen the example of uh, NaCl so that is ionic solid so the solid that is solute in this case can be classified as ionic or non-ionic ionic example we have seen it is the force of attraction between the ions that is the lattice energy in case of ionic solid it opposes the tendency of a solute to dissolve because it is endothermic process to dissolve the solid you have to break this lattice for that you have to provide energy so this is always energy requiring process so that is why higher is the lattice energy lesser will be the solubility trend fine but if you consider hydration energy if it is very high then the ionic solid will be more soluble now by high means if it is ex exothermic process by this high we mean to say the numerical value is high that means higher amount of energy is released okay then the ionic solid is more soluble so with lattice energy it is the opposite relationship higher is the lattice energy lesser will be the solubility but for hydration energy it is direct that is when hydration energy is high solubility will also be high but in case some non-ionic substances they are maybe uh, they may be dissolved in polar solvent it is not that uh, though we know that polar compounds can be soluble in polar medium but there may be some cases where non-ionic substances can be dissolved in polar solvent and how it is possible it is because of some hydrogen bonding okay so that is a special case so this is nature of solute now we will see nature of solvent so when we are talking about the nature of solvent we have to know the dielectric constant value which is denoted in this way so what is dielectric constant it is basically a measure of polarity so suppose we have two solvent x and y in the first case the value of dielectric constant is 10 and for the second it is 20 that means the second solvent will be more polar so this is the measure of polarity now ionic solids dissolve to a larger extent in a solvent having a high dielectric constant compared to low dielectric constant that means higher is the polarity of the solvent for ionic solid their solubility will also be very high so here we have one example suppose we have water dialectic constant 80 we have methanol dialectic constant lesser than water now if the solid is ionic therefore it will dissolve more readily in water compared to methanol okay and another example is benzene here you can see that the dialectic constant value is so low even lower than methanol so benzene is highly non-polar we know so that is why dialectic constant value that is also very small so ionic solid do will not be dissolved in benzene but if you we have some non-polar compound they can be dissolved in benzene okay so like dissolves in like medium that means like si similar type of solute 
and solvent that is polar solvent polar solute most of the time they will be soluble okay so keeping this as benchmark remember this like dissolves like we can say that ionic or polar compounds for example nacl kcl they will be dissolved in polar solvent like water and if we have any non polar compound or covalent compound mostly organic molecules uh, though these are uh, we cannot say directly that these are organic molecules but mostly organic molecules better i remove this slide non polar molecule covalent molecule or organic molecule so here what we have iodine and s8 so these are non polar basically it can be dissolved in non polar solvents like ccl4 carbon tetrachloride and ch2 that is carbon disulfide okay so we have to remember that like dissolves like if the nature of solute and solvent are similar type then there will be solubility uh, high solubility but if it is not we cannot explain solubility so we have seen nature of solvent nature of solute now we will see what is the effect of temperature and pressure on the solubility of uh, solid in liquid because now we are discussing solid in liquid so there may be three cases when we are talking about temperature first temperature okay so first case is when the process of dissolution is endothermic so del a solution suppose it is endothermic so it is greater than 0 so the solubility of solid in that case it will increase with increase of temperature because it is energy requiring process so that is why here we have written solute plus solvent plus heat heat is not written in the right hand side because heat will be absorbed so that is why it will be required that is why it is in the left hand side and uh, this is the case one case two is when the process of dissolution is exothermic so it is lesser than zero it is negative so the solubility of solid now it will decrease with increase of temperature now all these are basically based on lee chatelier principle which uh, we get in chemical equilibrium chapter so according to this principle what it says suppose we have a system which is already in equilibrium okay and now from external side we are disturbing the equilibrium state and how we are disturbing it by changing the temperature concentration pressure etc so the system which is already in equilibrium it will try to uh, minimize the all these disturbances that we are creating from the outside it will try to minimize all this by shifting the equilibrium towards that side where it can be minimized maximum okay so here for example suppose in the first case here energy is absorbed okay so when we are providing more energy in the form of temperature we are providing more energy that means the system will be towards from left hand side it will move towards right hand side why because only when it is moving from left hand side to right hand side then only heat is absorbed so it is already in equilibrium and now we are adding some extra heat we are adding extra energy so it will try to consume that energy so that it can maintain its original equilibrium condition that is why with increase in temperature the equilibrium direction will be from towards product side that is towards solution side similarly if it is exothermic now so heat is released so heat is already in excess so if we further increase the temperature that means now we are adding some more energy so what will happen the system will try to move from right hand side to left hand side because it will try to minimize the effect that we are creating from outside okay so as it is moving in the backward direction that means we cannot get solution so that is the reason that solubility of solid decreases with increase of temperature so here we have some examples where we can uh, get this type of uh, cases and the third one is solids whose solubility does not increase or decrease with temperature so here uh, no this is not correct because this is for uh, case 2 solids whose this is very rare case actually 
mostly you will see it is uh, del H solution it is mostly negative that is exothermic in some cases it may be positive and when it is neither increases or decreases with temperature change so here we have example calcium chloride 6 H2O uh, that may be a third type of case okay effect of pressure so temperature effect we have seen now what is the effect of pressure for solid in liquid remember it is solid solute in liquid solute so pressure does not have very significant effect on solubility of solid in liquid why because when solute is solid and solvent is liquid they are highly incompressible that is with increase in pressure there is no such effect on their volume but suppose if it is gaseous substance then with increase in pressure the volume will be decreased so there is a large effect but in case of in case of solid and liquid they are incompressible so pressure effect is not so important here so they practically remain unaffected by the change in pressure but this is only for solid in liquid if it is ga gas in liquid it will be completely different scenario fine now we will see solubility of gaseous solute in liquid solute so there are some gases like hydrogen oxygen nitrogen they get dissolved in water but extent is very small but there are some gases ammonia carbon dioxide HCl they are highly soluble in water so why they are highly soluble because they react with water for example, CO2 reacts with water and it forms H2CO3 acid. Ammonia reacts with water, it forms NH4OH bases. Okay, so because they react with solvent and remember solubility of gaseous solute in liquid solvent. Now the solute is gas, greatly affected by both temperature and pressure. In the previous case we have seen pressure has no such effect but temperature has effect but in this case both temperature and pressure will have effect so first we will see what is the effect of temperature so in this graph we have taken solubility in y axis and temperature in degree centigrade in x axis so for each gas we can see as we are increasing the temperature the solubility is decreasing now in different gases the decrease amount is uh, different so for helium there is decrease but it is not very uh, observable fine in case of nitrogen there is decrease now see in case of methane it is the line is very steep so the decrease um, uh, that is the rate of decrease is very high so it may vary from gas to gas so when temperature is rising the solubility of gas is decreasing so what happens when there is rise in temperature basically more kinetic energy is present in the gas now as more kinetic energy is present now the molecules of gases they will move randomly and as a result they will collide with each other they will also collide with the wall of the container in which they are kept so this will break the intermolecular bonds and the gas, gases can escape out easily from solution so intermolecular bond it is basically between gas and liquid that is solute and solvent okay so the interaction intermolecular interaction between gas and liquid that will be broken because now we are increasing the temperature and it will escape out easily from solution okay so for gas gaseous solute in liquid solvent it is always the the truth is it will solubility will always decrease with increase in temperature and the reason is this okay because kinetic energy is increased collision will increase as a result the interaction which is present between solute and solvent that will break and they will escape from the liquid state to that is outside the liquid that means now they are no longer soluble okay common examples uh, of effect of temperature on the solubility of gaseous solute in liquid solvent is when suppose we have kept any cold drink bottle 
at room temperature it is not in freeze and another bottle is kept at room temperature uh, at fridge so two cold drink bottles are there one is kept at fridge another one is outside the fridge so which is outside the fridge obviously temperature is high so after some time we will see that if we taste both of these cold drink then the cold drink which is present in freeze that will be more fizzy but the cold drink which is at room temperature that will become non fizzy that means now the carbon dioxide which is dissolved in the cold drink that will be escaping out from the drink so as a result the fizziness that will decrease the taste will be flat another example is thermal power plant they discharge hot water into water bodies like ponds rivers lakes now in water there is already some dissolved oxygen for which aquatic animals can survive but if this hot water now they are in this uh, ponds rivers or lakes what will be the effect now the dissolved oxygen in water the amount will be decrease so that is the reason that when uh, this hot water uh, it is thrown in water bodies like ponds rivers uh, it is dangerous for the aquatic animals because now they are not getting enough oxygen because solubility of oxygen is decrease with increase in temperature because we are adding hot water now why the solubility of gases in liquid decrease with increase in temperature one reason we have already seen in the previous slide that is it is in because of increase in kinetic energy another way also uh, by we can describe the same observation and that is here the process of dissolution of gas in liquid you can consider it as if it is condensation condensation means suppose gaseous molecules they are very free in nature they are randomly moving but when we are bringing them inside the liquid that means now they are coming close to each other so this is one kind of condensation they are coming close to each other so in this process heat is always evolved that means the dissolution of gas in liquid solvent is always exothermic and as it is exothermic that means that as dissolution is exothermic the solubility will decrease with increase of temperature and that is according to lee chatelier principle because energy is evolved and we are adding more energy so the system will be now moving from the right hand side direction to left hand side direction okay so this is another way we can describe why with increase in temperature solubility of gases in liquids decreasing what is the effect of pressure now the effect of pressure in case of gaseous solute and liquid solvent it is very important and it is so important that we have some law which is known as henry's law in case of solid solute we have seen that there is no such effect but in this case there is effect so effect of pressure it has been found that the gas solubility in liquid increases with increase in pressure okay so here we have two picture in the first case pressure is low in the second case pressure is high so when pressure is high you can see more number of molecules now inside the liquid that means solubility is increased so the quantitative relation quantitative relation means we are saying that with increase in pressure uh, solubility is increasing but we need some quantitative uh, result that is how much uh, pressure when we are applying some specific pressure then what will be the corresponding increase in solubility if we want to get the quantitative relation then we have to take the help of henry's law so this law is based on effect of pressure on the solubility of gaseous solute in liquid solvent so according to this law this law can be expressed in different ways okay so that is why i have written here in uh, by oblique sign okay the solubility of gas in liquid this is one terminology another thing is the mass of the gas dissolved by a given volume of liquid so this is as if concentration another way you can say that the mole fraction of gas in the solution so all these are basically uh, analog to each other solubility of gas in solid 
mass of a gas dissolved in a specific volume of liquid which is nothing but concentration and mole fraction of the gas that that is also another way to express concentration so all these are directly proportional to partial pressure of the gas which is present above the surface of solution at constant temperature so this is above the surface of the solution this region so here the partial pressure of gas that is present suppose if it is p then this solubility or concentration on mole fraction that is x suppose mole fraction is x so it will be proportional to partial pressure okay or you can also write that p is proportional to x both are actually same thing now the most commonly used form because here we have uh, different terms but the most commonly used is the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase now we are saying it from reverse direction that is now we are saying that partial pressure is proportional that is this one in the first case we are saying that mole fraction or concentration is proportional to p but now we are saying that p is proportional to mole fraction both are actually same but uh, be very careful when we are saying that p is proportional to mole fraction and to remove the proportionality sign now we have here kh and this kh is known is known as henry's law's constant okay so it is very easy to understand because when it is in mole fraction there is no unit mole by mole ratio there is no unit and in the left hand side we have pressure unit so suppose pressure is expressed in bar or atm then obviously the unit of kh will be in bar or atm because both side the unit must be same so the unit of kh will also be the unit of pressure but suppose the x is not mentioned as mole fraction it is mentioned as c then accordingly the unit of kh may change though most of the time you will see that it is simply mole fraction and pressure on the left hand side but suppose in some books if you find that x is proportional to p then x is written as some constant k into p so obviously here the unit will be different in this case unit is pressure but here the unit must be the opposite unit of x so that it can be cancelled and there must be sorry same unit as that of x and opposite unit to that of y so that it must be cancelled because k is now multiplied with p okay so in some uh, numericals or in some books this expression can also be found so it is very easy to understand because when k h value will be given or the value of k is given from the unit you can understand that which equation you will use so if the unit is given in simply pressure that is k h is given in pressure obviously we have to use this equation but if it is given in some other uh, unit that is the unit of uh, mole sorry mole fraction if it is mole fraction mole fraction has no unit so k will be having the unit of reverse atmosphere similarly if in case of x there is c or solubility suppose it can also be written as a is equal to kp then accordingly it will change the unit of k will change so whenever you are solving any numerical you have to read the carefully what is the unit of k depending on that we have to use the corresponding equation okay here we have a graph see now it is taken solubility in the y axis and partial pressure in the x axis we have oxygen carbon monoxide nitrogen helium uh, in all these cases solubility is increasing with pressure though for different gases uh, the amount is not same because that depends on the value of kh which is the proportionality constant for different gases there will be different values for kh at a particular temperature obviously because kh is also dependent on temperature we'll come to that point so here when kh uh, temperature is fixed then uh, remember this is at constant temperature okay so here uh, solubility is increased for all these gases with increase in partial pressure now we will go into the details of henry's law what are the factors that affect henry's law constant the nature of the gas nature of the solvent temperature and pressure okay so for each uh, 
mostly you will see that for each gas because solvent mostly we consider water so solvent is common but if gas is different so cage values that will also be different at different temperature mostly we take the by default we take the temperature uh, under normal condition room temperature okay so if it, uh, it is mentioned that at room temp uh, no temperature is mentioned we can consider by default that it is at room temperature okay but remember it is dependent on the nature of both solid and uh, sorry nature of both solute and solvent that is gas and liquid and temperature and pressure limitations of henry's law there are some limitations it is applicable only when the molecules of the system are in a state of equilibrium okay so when we are dissolving gas in liquid there is gaseous molecules they are uh, dissolved uh, dissolved in liquid solvent so they are must be equilibrium that is they are going inside and they are going outside so under this equilibrium condition this law is applicable this doesn't hold true when gases are placed under extremely high pressure so if the pressure is excessive then this law will not be applicable and if the temperature is very very low okay then also it is not applicable because see when pressure is high basically solubility will be very high and when temperature is low because we know that with increase in temperature solubility decreases that means when it is low temperature solubility will be maximum so in both these cases basically solubility is very high and then we cannot apply henry's law and the last point is the law is not applicable when the gas and the solution participate in chemical reaction with each other for example suppose we have added ammonia gas in water so it will react with water and that is the reason that it is forming its solubility is so high in water and it is forming in each for each so here the reason for solubility is completely different the reason is chemical reaction is going on so how we can apply this law because this law is not based on uh, chemical reaction another example is uh, carbon dioxide in water it will form h2co carbonic acid so for these cases henry's law is not applicable fine so these are the limitations of henry's law now you can see in this table different henry's law constant for different gases and here solvent is constant which is water and if we see that for nitrogen and oxygen two temperature are mentioned 293 303 293 303 so you can see that in 293 for nitrogen if we compare these two values it is increasing with increase in temperature the value is high that means it is changing for oxygen also this value is high okay and here we have um, helium and hydrogen also and in the right hand side argon carbon dioxide formaldehyde methane vinyl chloride so all are at 298 that is room temperature 25 degree centigrade and here the unit of kg that is used is kilo bar that is k bar okay so here we can say from this table that for oxygen and nitrogen with increase in temperature the value of kg that is increasing okay so one thing we can explain from this that suppose if i write this partial pressure equal to kg into mole fraction so when kg is very high at high temperature so when kg is high x must be uh, decrease that is mole fraction must be decrease and kg when it is high at high temperature it is having higher value that means at high temperature mole fraction will also be less to keep the left hand side quantity constant when kg is increasing x is decreasing and we also know that with increase in temperature concentration decreases okay so we can explain this uh, from this point of view also now we will see some examples so carbonated drink if it is left open and the last time we have discussed that one drink a bottle 
of the drink is kept in fridge another one is kept is outside the room temperature so that example we have given for comparing the temperature that is one is at low temperature one is at high temperature but now we are talking about pressure not temperature so when it is left open that means suppose one cold drink is closed container another one is open container so which is open obviously pressure will be low so when it is left open for long enough the concentration of carbon dioxide will decrease because pressure will decrease and the container which is not uh, open which is closed you will see it is more fizzy in nature that means more carbon dioxide is dissolved so when it is left open for long time uh, the carbon dioxide concentration of carbon dioxide in the drink will reach an equilibrium with the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that is above the liquid surface and amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere the percentage is very high so when this equilibrium it will reach that means the concentration of co2 will be very uh, low so that is why it becomes non fizzy second example when deoxygenated blood interacts with oxygen rich air in alveoli suppose the air that we are taking okay we are inhaling oxygen is high and that air is present in alveoli now the deoxygenated blood where oxygen concentration is low this uh, oxygen uh, low oxygenated blood and the high oxygenated blood there will be gas exchanges that will take place and this is because of henry's law why because the partial pressure of dissolved co2 in the deoxygenated blood that is very high because it is deoxygenated oxygen low co2 high and obviously as the amount of co2 is high in the deoxygenated blood it will move towards alveoli blood okay similarly the blood which is in alveoli their oxygen amount is high so oxygen will come towards deoxygenated deoxygenated blood so in this way there will be gas exchange going on so the gradually the dissolved oxygen in deoxygenated uh, blood will increase and the amount of co2 in alveoli will increase and then we will exhale that co2 and it will be outside of our body okay so oxygen flows from alveoli into the deoxygenated blood and carbon dioxide move from deoxygenated blood to alveoli okay so these are the examples of practical examples of henry's law raoul's law on vapor pressure another law now this law is based on vapor pressure the molecule in the vapor phase we know that they move randomly in the vacant space and during this motion they strike the surface of the liquid and they can be condensed okay suppose there is some vapor pressure uh, sorry vapor phase the molecule is here it will move randomly it will strike the surface of the liquid or surface of the container and it will be condensed so at some point equilibrium will be reached and the evaporation rate that is they are coming outside and they are going inside going inside condensation coming outside evaporation these two rate will be same at equilibrium now the pressure exerted by vapor over the liquid surface at equilibrium that will be called as vapor pressure okay so the pressure exerted by the vapor which is present over the liquid surface that pressure will be called as vapor pressure this is the definition of vapor pressure now when we are increasing the temperature the rate of evaporation increases so obviously now the amount of gaseous molecules outside above the liquid surface will increase and as a result vapor pressure will also increase if solute is non volatile solid or liquid okay so see uh, it is not still the discussion of gaseous solid in liquid solvent we are discussing raoul's law it is completely on uh, different uh, thing which is the main important thing here is vapor pressure so solute may be uh, that is raoul's law when we are discussing the solute may be non volatile solid or liquid so suppose the solute is non volatile solid or liquid that means there is no question of evaporation if the solute is non volatile 
for that is solid or liquid then vapor pressure of the solution it will be equal to partial vapor pressure of the solvent only because only solvent which is liquid that is volatile not the solute is volatile but in some cases it may be that the solute is volatile okay non volatile solid or volatile liquid then vapor pressure will be equal to the sum of partial vapor pressure of solute and also that of solvent okay because now both of them have some contribution in this case solute is non volatile so they have no contribution for vapor pressure but when they are volatile then they will have contribution and the total vapor pressure that will be and that is this actually the total vapor pressure that will be equal to the sum of partial vapor pressure of solute and that of solvent so what is raoult's law what it says raoult's law the partial vapor pressure of any component in the solution the component may be solute the component may be solvent is directly proportional to its mole fraction so suppose we have component a we have component b mole fraction of a x a mole fraction of b x b partial pressure of a is p a partial pressure of b is p b okay so here the partial vapor pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction that means p a is proportional to x a similarly p b is also proportional to x b 